Hi everyone! Today, we are going to put focus on effect of temperature to speed of sound, which is covered by Quarter 1, Module 4. You're still with me, Sir Janus, so let's learn and have fun. For today's video, we are going to investigate the effect of temperature to the speed of sound. First off, let us explore what causes sound. So when you take a tuning fork and strike it against a block of wood, what will you observe? So as you can see, the tuning fork would vibrate and thus you are hearing a sound. So specifically, yung sound is made up when an object vibrates. So sound travels because the vibrating object makes nearby particles vibrate. So sound needs a medium to travel through and it cannot pass through a vacuum. So remember that sounds are made when an object vibrates. So without vibration, you would not hear a sound. In order to prove that sound needs a medium to pass through, we can use the bell jar experiment. So ano nga ba yung bell jar experiment? If we are going to place a ringing clock inside the bell jar, what do you think would happen? Kung merong panghangin sa loob ng bell jar, then the result would be maririnig mo pa rin yung sound. However, if you are going to remove the air from the bell jar, what do you think would happen? Okay, so if you have answered that sound cannot be heard, then definitely you are correct. Because since there is no more medium to pass through, so wala ka nang maririnig na sound. So when studying sound waves, we can use this type of equipment. Yung una, we have the loudspeaker, the signal generator, and of course, the oscilloscope. Now, yung loudspeaker converts signals from the signal generator into sound waves. On the other hand naman, yung oscilloscope shows the wave patterns and allows us to see sound. So paano ba natin makikita yung sound? So through the use of oscilloscope. So as you can see, yung oscilloscope now converts sound into a pattern that we can see. Now, a sound can be quiet or loud, malakas or mahina. So this is the uh, pattern produced on an oscilloscope of a quiet sound. Dito naman yung sa loud sound. Do you know the difference between the two? As you can see, the loudness of a sound is shown by the height of the wave or kung yung taas itong mga alon. And this is what you call as the amplitude, kung gaano kataas yung wave. So, which word should be crossed out in this sentence? Ano ba yung tama? The larger the amplitude of the wave on the trace, the louder or quieter the sound. The correct answer is, of course, the larger or mas higher yung wave, then it would be louder or mas malakas yung sound. Second question, halimbawa binigyan ka ng ganitong pattern. Alin sa palagay mo? yung wave that would produce a loudest sound. Is it A or B? Correct answer is, sound A is the loudest. Anong pagbabasehan natin? It is because, if we are going to compare the two, siya yung may pinakamataas na amplitude. Aside from measuring the loudness of a sound, using the wave produced by the oscilloscope, we can also determine the pitch and the frequency of a sound. So yung sound can be high or low, or this is what you call as the pitch of the sound. Kung matinis or masyado mababa yung uh, tone ng isang sound. So yung low pitch sound looks like this one, and yung high pitch sound naman looks like this one. So anong napapansin ninyo? As you can see, if we are going to look at this one, matitingnan natin kung how many waves there are. Kung gaano karaming waves yung dumadaan sa isang point, ito yung tinatawag nating frequency. Okay, so which word should be crossed out in this sentence? The greater the number of the waves across the oscilloscope, what do you think? Would it, would it be lower or higher frequency and pitch? The correct answer is, of course, it is much higher. Mas maraming waves yung dumadaan sa isang point, mas high pitch yung sound. So, which do you think is the highest pitch? Is it A or B? Now, as you can see, titingnan natin kung gaano karaming waves yung dumadaan sa isang point. And as you can see, the highest pitch would be 
correct answer is letter B. Kasi most number of waves across the oscilloscope, it has the highest frequency and so it has the highest pitch. This time, let's proceed to the speed of sound. When experimenting with the speed of sound, we can do this uh, at home and carry out in a quiet open space. So for this experiment, we will use a cymbal. So what you will do is when you see the cymbal crash, or kung halimbawa meron kayong drum, you are going to press start on the timer. Tapos pag narinig mo na yung sound, then you are going to press stop. Okay, and then of course, measure kung ano yung time na dumating yung sound. So after conducting the experiment, then you are going to record now the result of the sound experiment. So yung distance kanina is 100, yung time is 0.34. So you are going to uh, repeat it into four trials. But for the sake of this uh, discussion, let us say that paano ba determine? So you are just going to use the formula speed is equals to distance over time. So yung speed natin kanina is 100 divided by 0.34 seconds. So, yung speed of sound natin dito is 294 meters per second. If comparing with the, the result of our experiment, the speed of sound in air is about 340 meters per second. Now, you might ask, so bakit naging 294 or kung ano man yung result ng magiging uh, experiment mo? So, how does the calculation for the average of sound compare with the real speed? Masyadong mabababa dun sa result mo or mas mataas yung value. So what do you think are the errors that could have affected the symbols or sa experiment mo na hindi uh, naging ganito yung result? Okay, so do you think the speed of sound in water is the same as the speed in air? So we are going to find out or we are going to find it out as we go on with our discussion. So as you can see, that sound travels differently or varies in speed or nababago yung kanyang bilis depending on the different state of matter that it is traveling. So na, as we can see, that sound needs a substance to travel through and travels by particles vibrating. So which state of matter does sound travel fastest through? So is it would be the solid, liquid, or gas? So as you can see, yung sound waves travel fastest through solids. So bakit nga ba sa solids? So as you can see, the particles in a solid are closer together as you can see than in a gas or a liquid. This means that the vibrations are more easily passed from particle to particle and so sound travels the fastest. So unlike dito sa gas, wherein malalayo yung mga particles sa isa't isa, so that is why sound travels the slowest in air. So here's a quick comparison on the speed of sound on the different materials. As you can see, at air, at 0 degrees Celsius, sound travels at 330 meters per second. Sa air naman, at 30 degrees Celsius at 350. Water, 1,450. Concrete, with 5,000 meters per second. And steel, which is 6,000 meters per second. Second. Again, mas mabilis mag-travel yung sound sa mga solids. It is because yung particles is malalapit sa isa, sa isa or compact. So that is why yung vibrations is madaling ma-transfer. So kanina, na-discuss natin that yung speed or bilis ng sound is naapektuhan kung anong klaseng medium siya nagmumove. So whether it is solid, liquid, or gas. Ngayon naman, aside sa type of medium, speed of sound can also be affected by the temperature. Now, the speed of sound in dry air, which is at 0 degrees Celsius, is around 331 meters per second. So, the, uh, the speed, however, gets faster when the temperature is increased because of the presence of water vapor. So, in warmer air or air with moisture, Molecules move faster and bump into each other more often, so sound can travel the uh, fastest or faster. Now, the speed of sound increases by 0.60 meters per second with every increase of 1 degree Celsius, and this can be expressed as speed is equals to 331 meters per second plus 0.6 meters per second over degree Celsius times temperature. Now, 
For quick reference, ito yung mga speed of sound in air. At 0 degrees Celsius, as you can see, is 331. So, from 20 degrees Celsius is 343. As you can see, habang tumataas yung temperature, is nag increase din yung speed of sound. This time, let us try to compute for the speed of sound in air. Let's have example number one. Suppose you are given what is the speed of sound in the air if the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So, we are going to use the formula. Given is temperature is equals to 30 degrees Celsius. Solution is equals to speed is equals to 331 meters per second plus 0 0.6 meters per second over degree Celsius times temperature. So, as you can see, uh, we are going to substitute the 30 degrees Celsius for the time and, of course, cancel out the measurement for temperature. So, 331 plus 18 by multiplying th uh, 30 with 0 0.6, so we are going to derive 1.8. So, 331 plus 18, so you are going to arrive at the answer, which is 349 meters per second. So, the speed of sound in air at 30 degrees Celsius is approximately 349 meters per second. So, how about if we are going to compute the uh, temperature based on the given speed of sound? So, we are still going to use the same formula, which is this one. So, substitute the value for the speed, which is 346 meters per second. So, it's equal to 300 meters uh, per second plus 0 0.6 uh, meters per second over degree Celsius times temperature. So, combine the quantities with the same unit. So, you are going to subtract 346 minus 331. So, the result is 15 meters per second equals to 0 0.6 meters per second over degree Celsius times temperature. So, you are going to simplify it. And then, you are now going to divide 15 by 0 0.6. So, the result is 25 degree Celsius. At this juncture, we are now going to discuss about the properties of sound. So, earlier, we already know that sound travels like a wave. And just like any other wave, yung sound wave is hindi siya basta-basta tumitigil when it reaches the end of the medium or when it encounters an obstacle in its path. Rather, it will undergo a certain behavior. Either it would reflect or refract. So later on, we are going to try to differentiate ano bang pagkakaiba ng reflection sa refraction. So the first property of sound that we are going to discuss is reflection. So ano nga ba yung reflection? So, pag sinabing reflection, it is just simply described as the turning back of the wave as it hits a barrier. So, yung example ng reflection is yung tinatawag na echo. Pag bumalik yung sound wave, once bumangga siya sa barrier, ito yung tinatawag na echo. Reverberation naman, on the other hand, pag maraming echo, yung bumalik doon sa sound source. So, this bit uh, best fits the bathroom which enhances the voice or pag yung ingay na naririnig mo once you're inside the classroom. As you might have observed, kahit sa mga theaters or sa mga sinihan, meron tayong maririnig na reverberations or echoes wherein it would be disadvantageous kasi masakit sa tenga and you would not be able to concentrate dun sa pinapanood mo. So, to ko, uh, to combat this one, to solve for this one, as you can see, yung mga designers use uh, curtains, cloth covers, and chairs and carpets to absorb the sound or yung pag tinatawag na pag soundproof ng isang room. So, another application of reflection or sound reflection is yung tinatawag na sonar. As you can see, yung sonar uh, used by boats is used to map the seafloor and to determine the depth of the ocean or sea. Uh, ginagamit din ito ng mga fishermen para ma-detect yung mga shoals or grupo ng mga isda that they will be fishing. Now, another uh, organism that uses uh, sonar or rather echolocation is yung bats. So, although bats uh, cannot uh, see well in the dark, but it uses echolocation to uh, move on the direction that they are uh, taking and also to detect prey. 
The next property of sound that we will be discussing is about refraction. Ano nga ba yung refraction? As you can see, uh, the refraction of sound waves involves a change in direction of waves as they pass from one medium to the other. So, you must remember that sound waves travel slower in cooler air than in warmer air. So, when a sound wave propagates in the air with temperature which changes with altitude, re uh, refraction happens. So, a sound wave travels from air of higher temperature to lower temperature. So, you might be wondering, why is it that mas marami kang naririnig at night than compared at daytime? So, aside from the noise of passing vehicles or baka natutulog na lahat, you hear much better at night. It is because during the day, the sound bends away from the ground. So, ibig, yung tendency ng mga sound waves is pupunta dun sa taas. However, at night time, it bends toward the ground. So, hence at night, you have additional sound reaching you, making it louder. Kaya nga, yung mga sound na kahit malalayo, you are able to hear it because sound tend to bend downward at night time. This time, let us check how much you have learned from the video by taking on this challenge. So, you are going to compute for the speed of sound based on the given temperatures. So, you may use the formula below. So, compute what is the speed of sound at 45 degrees Celsius, 21 degrees Celsius, and negative 1 degree Celsius. So, you may pause the video while answering and press play to check your answer. So, here is the correct answer. Did you get it all correct? If so, congratulations! That's it for today's video. I hope you have learned and have fun. Please make sure to click like, subscribe, and ring the bell for you to be updated on the next upcoming video. So, Einsteinatics out! Thank you everyone!